Hello, everybody. Welcome if you're here. <coughs> Hello. I don't think anybody's in here yet. <laughs> oh, hi, Janie. <laughs> I just choked on my cough drop. Hi, Kiki. I'm looking for my socks. I got to put socks on. My, my toesies are cold. <laughs> How are you guys? <coughs> oh, I, these cough cough drop cough drops these cough drops are going to be the death of, death of me <coughs> keeping um little c in our thoughts and prayers today she's going in i think she said she had sure has to have a Something done today. Hopefully she doesn't have to have surgery, I think is what she was hoping. <coughs> Goodness. <coughs> So we've had, I'm still a little bit under the weather. Um, we've had like 80 degrees the other day, 87 degrees. <coughs> and it was nice yesterday. Kind of. And then we got thunderstorms. Well, today it's like 50 something degrees. Of course. But this weather is kicking my butt like bad. I start to feel better and then I, it hits me again. But since I didn't go live last night, because I was not feeling good last night, I got a sty in my eye. So, it's been bugging me. And, um, oh, that would be awesome, Jeannie. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. Um, I uh, was going to go live last night, but I, I had a sty in my eye. Then I have that abscess under my left eye. And the sty's in the right eye. So, yeah, it's just been a weekend. So, I um, I just relaxed last night, pretty much. <coughs> Hi, Lisa. Uh, I'm feeling a little better today, but not my cough is just... <coughs> <coughs> it's not going away. I've been sucking off... Sucking off... Sucking off. Sucking on cough drops like non-stop and I have to switch them up. Otherwise, they're not helping But they don't help really and I've taken Cough syrup and that's not helping. So I'm just winging it So I have been busy making some things I've been posting pictures y'all have seen I have been making some Paper beads. These are my mermaid tail ones. And I've also done all these here. Let me cover this up. I was going to zoom in so I don't have to hold everything down <laughs> just for a minute. So I have made all these up also. These are my favorite. These are my watermelon ones. But I have these ones are these are made from painty papers. They're kind of like a galaxy color and they have an iridescent medium on them. So they're really kind of shiny. 
<coughs> I don't know if autofocus is going to focus on them or not. We will see. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Come on. Come on. It might not focus on them. There we go. There. For a second it did. So I got those. And these are made. I made these using my gelatos. These are made using my gelatos. Um, let's see. These two, these were made with my gelatos. Okay, that autofocus has got to go off. I do not like autofocus at all. And I got some newspaper ones that are made from a, uh, a newsprint wax paper, like deli paper. These, yeah, these were made from, um, when I used my homemade sprays and such, I have leftover papers. You know, what I sprayed on, like this one here. So that's what these are made from, is just drop papers from my sprays. And all these are made from painty papers right here. These I made myself. And then these are glitter, which glitter paper, uh, like cardstock, like pattern, you know, scrapbook paper. Some paper is thinner than some. So the thicker, the which I want to show you guys these. The thicker paper you use, the, the wider your bead's going to be. So you can see how thick these are compared to, say, let me, uh, these ones here. So these were made from my deli paper. You can see how small they are. That's used the same, I used the same tool to make them. It's just the difference in the paper. Um, if you use copy paper, you're, um... These I made with copy paper right here. These are actually, was this? Nope. These were not, sorry. These are made from 12 by 12 sheets of deli paper. Uh, jelly plate prints. Um, let's see. <coughs> so I'm not, uh, okay. So like these ones here were made using um, copy paper. So you can see the difference in the size between copy paper and pattern paper, which I understand pattern paper is going to be, you know, usually 12 by 12. So you, it depends on the, how much paper you're using to how thick your beads are going to be and how um, um, uh, long your paper is. The longer your paper, the, the bigger your beads going to be. Um, I've been uh, kind of obsessed with making these right now. And what I, what I do, because they're all in separate bags, you're probably wondering why. Maybe not. But each, each bag is one, this is like one piece of copy paper that I cut up into the strips. So I didn't want to mix them. I wanted to keep that set to that set. So that's why they're individually done. And I have, these are my favorites. I'm not going to show you guys how to make these ones right now. After my auction, I might, but I'm not going to show you. Um, this is my own design of these. I didn't see nobody else make these. I've never seen these on Etsy or Pinterest or nothing. This is my own design. And so right now I'm kind of keeping that to myself. But it's not hard to figure out. So, but these are my ladybugs. So these are made using. <clears throat> these are one inch strips. So that's the size for one inch strips. And this is what they look like after. After I um, coat them with ultra thick embossing powder. This is what they look like before. And you can see the ends are white. We're on these, they're black. So what I do, I take a Sharpie and I color the ends. And I color on the inside. And then I put black eyelets in the centers. 
So those are my large ones. And then I got three different sizes of these that I'm making. Yes, I'm being stingy with how. <laughs> and then I have, I got a lot of baby, baby ladybug ones. These take a little longer to make, but I'm obsessed with these so bad. And these are my watermelon. I call these melon balls, my mini melons. And Kiki actually said they look like melon balls. And I'll probably have to turn my focus on so you can see the seeds in them. So let me turn the autofocus on here, maybe. There we go. Come on. Well, you got to see them for a second because autofocus just has a mind of its own on sometimes. There we go. I think there's, I'm obsessed with these two. My daughter is obsessed with watermelons, so <clears throat> that's why I did the watermelons. Let me zoom back out here. Okay. They will be, I will be selling them in my auction. <coughs> but, um, I wasn't going to show how I did them because there's a million videos on how to make paper beads. It's been around for years. And it, to me, it's, it's not hard to find a video to learn how to make them. But I, I do things a little different, I guess. So I decided I would show you. Here's some others that Squirrel and I have made. And these ones here are used. Um, I took two strips of paper and rolled them together. So that made a thicker bead. So that's what the difference is. You can get thicker beads. If you want more of a rounded ball looking bead, you use thicker paper. Um, Jetty Belly. I'll put her description or uh, her video link down in my description box when I'm done today. Um, she does tutorials and she shows how to get different types of beads with um, doing this. She shows how to cut them. Um, that's where I learned how to make these from was watching her videos. These are mostly made out of um, painty papers like this was a jelly plate print from my, one of my rainbow prints, um, book pages. I will say if you're going to use book paper, be careful what words you're putting on there. Cause sometimes you get some naughty words in a book and sometimes they show up in your art. So yeah. And I have cut, I have jars everywhere right now with beads. I also have glitter beads that I did. You can see the glitter ones in there. I got that glitter paper from Dollar Tree. And I also have foil ones, which I got from Dollar Tree. Like at Christmas time, they have that foil paper. <coughs> These all have not been um, glazed, I guess you would. Oh, there it is. These haven't been glazed yet. There's many ways to seal them. Um, I have a little bottle here that used to be a uh, oops uh, autofocus has to go off sorry about that you guys <clears throat> um the auction is going to be july 13th and 14th it's going to be two days because i'm doing four hours and then stopping because it gets it gets to be too much to handle if it's longer than four hours so i'm going to do four hours one day and four hours the next day um but this is an old puffy paint bottle, like from back in the day. I'm talking like I was like 10 years old or so. It was all dried up. My sister gave me a bunch of them. It's just like this. This I got at Dollar General. So I cleaned it out. And this is what I use for my, I put my tacky glue in here. I also have one with um, diamond glaze. I have one with 
glossy accents. I also have one with Mod Podge. These are cheap at Dollar General. I think it was like two bucks or even a dollar. Sometimes you can get these at Dollar Tree. So for a dollar to just squish out all this paint and use it, because if y'all know, tacky glue is thick. I have this bottle here. It's got the upside down, you know, always ready cap. It's still sometimes hard to push out. And my hands cramp. So those of you with arthritis or any anything like that that causes your hands to cramp, this is amazing. <laughs> Let me tell you. So um, that's what I use is the tacky glue. You can use Mod Podge. You can use Tombow. You can use, I've seen people use glue sticks. If you want it to be semi-waterproof, so like if you're wearing your necklace outside, you can take, once you cut your strips, on the back side. So let, let me cut a strip and I will show you. So I usually use plain paper or I went through and I dug out a bunch of painting papers. These are all from Jelly Prints. This is old typing paper that I thought I could use. Um, I have copy paper, which these are copy paper prints, you know. Um, I have deli paper. And these make beautiful, the de like jelly prints. Oh, they make one of a kind beads. And you can use the deli paper for your beads. It's going to be a little thinner. It's going to be smaller, which these, these turned out amazing. These were made using the deli paper. And if you, um, you guys remember in my last auction, I had some brown beads like these. That I made. And we're going to have to turn on uh, the autofocus again really quick. Yes, there's a whole jar full. So these were made using deli paper. Let me get to focus here. Come on, focus. There we go, maybe. These I made using deli paper. They're, once I emboss them with the, the ultra thick embossing powder, they're, you can kind of squish them, but if you do several coats, you won't be able to squish it, but the paper's thin, so it's going to happen. Um, I have a whole jar, a whole jar. <clears throat> um, hi Cheryl, Kiki messages me like, what you doing? I'm like, I'll take a picture and I'll show her. So it's kind of funny. Another thing that you can do really quick before I forget, because I just seen it. For all y'all that collect that washi tape, let me show you. So I have some washi tape here. Let me move that extra piece. So I'm going to cut my strips. So, if I'm doing a tapered bead, which a tapered bead is, this is a tapered bead, okay? It's not, oh, get off of the focus. It's thick in the, one, it's the center, and then it tapers out into a smaller ends. That's, that's a tapered bead. Um, these are tube tube beads because they're just one one length they look like a tube they're one link one length spit the word out so for for tapered beads you have to cut your paper at an angle if you don't have a cutter you can do it with a ruler and a cutting mat and a, and a blade to get your edge let me move these papers out of the way so they're not distracting 
Oh, I'm doing a giveaway too today. I have something to give away that I think is cool. Oh, look, a bead. <laughs> um, to get your tapered on the edge, I'm going to zoom in just a tad. Okay. So here is my Fiskars cutting board. It's got the arm that comes out. Hi, anybody that came in that I may have missed. <laughs> I'm not ignoring you, I promise. To get your tapered end, you have your paper up at the top. And let me move this out of my way. What you're going to do is you're going to angle your paper one either the top or the bottom it don't matter so i'm going to angle my the the top here so you guys can see that and then i will show you the rest of it let me zoom in here all right so here's where my cut line is right there so i'm going to take the edge and i'm just going to slightly angle it if you see this cross line here i'm going to angle my paper to where that corner of my paper sits right in the corner of that. You guys can see here. I'm just going to angle my paper and set it there. Just like that. Okay. So now on the bottom right here. Do see if I can do this while holding this. You're going to slowly move your paper over to where your cut line is. And you're going to. Um, oh, let me. I need my other hand. I need another hand. Okay. <laughs> so here's my bottom. So I'm going to slide this over to where it's just inside the cut line. So when I cut, it's going to be a sliver. Okay. Because you don't want to have a straight edge if you're doing a tapered bead. All right. Let me zoom out so I can. Okay. Let me move my water bottles back here. There we go. All right, you always cut from the thick end, the wide end. You always cut from the end that's going to be wider. Otherwise, you're going to tear your paper. So I'm going to trim my paper now. And if you look, I barely took anything off on that edge. It's down to a sliver. See that? All right. You don't keep this piece. So now, if I was to line this, this paper up on the bottom of my cutting board or, or my cutter or my top, if I line that up here, you're going to see, well, we'll go at the bottom. If I line my bottom corner up with the half inch mark down here, see I'm at the half inch mark here. And if you follow that line all the way up, you'll see that it tapers. And I don't match up there. That's what you want. One second here. I got a message. Oh. So then what you're going to do is, because this was my wide end, and this was my thin end, you're going to alternate between the two ends when you cut. So my, let's see, my wide end is now going to be where that little end was. So if I want my bead to be an inch long, I'm going to bring my edge of my paper over to the one inch mark. Let me see if I can zoom that in a little bit and move my, move, which way do I got to move my camera? There we go. Okay. So if I want this to be one inch, I'm going to move my paper trimmer over to this mark. And then I'm going, to, depending if you want a thin end or a, long, a wider, you know, when you taper it, you can do it different ways. I like to go about an eighth of an inch just because I like to have a little bit left so I can glue it down. So I give it a little bit of a tail. Then from the wide end, you're going to cut your paper. So there is my first strip and my tip is wider than like you can do any size. So if I was to do the other end and I want a thinner side at that next at the bottom, I'm just going to line my paper up to where it's just barely 
in the, over the cutter line. So this will give me, and I'll line it up at the one inch, and I'm cutting from the top, the bigger side, and I'm just going to come down. And if you notice, my ends are different. One's, one's thicker, one's tinier. You can do them different. So it's just preference. Um, use scrap paper to, you know, to, till you can get your sizes done that you want. And then what you're going to do is I just cut from the top. So now I'm going to cut from the bottom. And say I don't want to use a one inch bead. I want a half inch. So you're going to move your corner down to the half inch mark. And then you're going to line up your other end at the top. And starting from the wide end, you're going to cut your bead. Your paper, not bead. So now my bead is going to be a half inch long. And I, I like doing it this way. I always leave my cutter blade at the top wherever I ended. So then that I know is where my wide end is going to be. So now my wide end's up here. And I'm going to do another half inch. And then slide this up here. This is when you need like multiple camera angles. <coughs> and on my cutter, there's a little line like there's like a little spot here between the white and where my cutter goes. And I usually just line that up just just around that spot. And th that's how I measure how wide I want my tips of my bead paper. So now I just cut from that side down to here. I'm leaving this here because that's the end I want to cut from. So I just open that up and move. And that's how you get your tapered beads. If you want a, a tubular bead, since this end is angled, we're going to come over to the straight edge here. This edge is straight. If, well, if the paper's straight, it's going to be straight. So say I want a one inch tubular bead. So I'm going to line it up with a one inch mark and I'm just going to cut my strip. And you can do three quarters inch. You can do a half inch. And you can even go smaller if you want to, like a quarter. So that's how you can cut your papers to get your different sizes. So if you are using plain paper, and um, which this works awesome. You can actually get images online and print images on a piece of paper if you're doing tubular beads. You could print a design on the bottom of your paper and then you print it at about an inch, inch and a half, give or take. And then because that's the only spot where your design is going to show. If you want to semi waterproof your beads, when you cut your strips, whether it be from patterned paper, already paper that's been you know, colored or painty papers, you're going to Mod Podge the back side where the image is. So if I wanted to make these semi waterproof, I would Mod Podge the back several coats to make sure that it was sealed. That's the only thing. So with that said, now I have tons of washi tape. I don't know about y'all, but I got pretty washi tape. So you could take your washi tape, line it up on the edge, and um, personally I would glue this. I would not do this unless I glued this. So actually, I'm going to use my glue stick because this is the extreme hold glue stick. So I, this is just a test, but I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to use that glue stick here and wipe up that sticky because... I don't want my paper sticking to that. Wipe that up. Okay. So I, ooh. Okay, so this part is sticky. So what I'm going to do, come on. I'm going to find, well, I don't want that part. I want this part of the washi tape. So I am going to line this up on the edge of my paper as best as I can to get the edge. And I might hang it a little bit over. 
So now I have that, and I want to make sure I got enough to cover my bead for my bead. So I'm going to trim this off, and that's easily done. You use your cutting board. I always tend to flip my paper over so I know where I'm cutting next to my paper, and you just trim it up the side, and you can trim it right off. So that's what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to line this up on this edge as best as I can whoop, missed it <laughs> as best as I can get it you're gonna want to line it up as best as you can best as you can let me slide there okay there we go now I'm lined up so that's about let me see uh inch and a half is what I have here that's covered. So now I'm going to trim the rest of this washi tape off. Or try to. Where's my ruler? I'm going to hold that down. And then trim this. You could just, if you didn't want to save your washi tape, you could just fold it over, which is fine. So I'll just fold this edge over. And there's a little bit on this edge here, so I'll fold those up. Or I can just use my scissors here and trim that excess off is fine. It's it's your preference. Whatever you want to do, what's easiest for you. If you don't want to put a lot of time into it, then don't. So here's my bead paper. This is what I'm going to use to roll my bead. I have... A bead rolling tool that I got. You can order them on Etsy or Amazon even. It, this is a... I don't even know what size it is, but I think it's a 1 8. But it, I got a 5 pack. And there it was pretty cheap for the 5 pack. Uh, depending on who you get it from, there's several people selling them on Etsy. You can use a bead roller tool. Um... You can use knitting needles. You can use toothpicks. Um, you can use, if you have a paintbrush that, you know, has a long end but it's not tapered, you could use that. You could use a skewer. Uh, you can use a chopstick. Whatever works for you. Um, we started using toothpicks when we first started and my hands cramped so bad. And then I went to a, a chopstick and a skewer. It's still, my hands kind of cramped. So I invested in these bead rolling tools. And what you do, uh, this is my preference. You do you, basic, like you do what you want to do. For me, my design is upside down, and this roller has a slot that you slide your paper into. There, You won't be able to see it much on here, but there's a slot in this, and that's where I slide my paper to. You can slide it all the way down. I like to keep it about here. Some people roll it this way towards them it it's whatever however you feel comfortable doing it for me i like to go this way with it so i roll away from me and i hold it like this in my hand with these you don't have to be so critical on when you roll it whereas with the cylinder beads you have to be a little more precise and i'll show you that so then you just roll it up. And some people like to glue as they go. I don't usually unless I'm keeping it pretty well tied up against the edge. Because sometimes they get wonky. And I'll show you how to fix that. So we're just going to roll this all wonky like. So I can show you. And I'm just going to roll that up. And sometimes they'll get loose on you and you just hold it tight and twist. So if you can see my ends tapered right here, we don't want that, but I'll show you how to fix it in a second. 
So as you can see, I'm getting down to this end. The only part I'm going to glue is about this far, a half an inch. So I'm going, I roll up to about there and I use tacky glue. You can use Mod Podge, whatever works for you. I'm going to poke the tip. Hi, Mary. Thank you for stopping in. Nice to see you. Hi, Mark. So I cover the edge all the way up to the tip as best as I can. It's hard to see. I'll show you in a second. But I put a little bit of a glue there. You can see all the glue right here. And then I tightly roll it over. And I have a baby white panty because the glue will peep out or seep out, not peep out. So you just tightly, you want it to be adhered. So you just, I always just keep rolling it around a little bit. And then when this doesn't pop back up, I roll my hand around like this and pop it off. And if you look, there's a white edge. I don't want that. So what I do is I stick it on my surface and I just push it down. I flip it over, push it down, flip it over, push it down. And then I straighten out where my end is here. And make sure my bead is good. And you have your paper bead. Now, if you, whoops, I stuck that on the wrong spot. If you don't want white ends, and this was using washi tape, so um, you might have to use a really good glue to help keep the washi tape to stick to itself. So that's going to be whatever you choose. Once you get that step done, you're going to want to take, um, if I can find one here, okay, I have a black Sharpie. Um, I'm going to want my end to be black. I just think that's best. So I'm just going to color around with my Sharpie here as best as I can. Whoops, and my finger just stuck in there here. I'll use a different marker here. Okay, this one's got a thinner tip so I can get in the little area here. And I stick it inside and I color the inside. And then I push down the other end and I do the same thing. I stick my knit of the marker inside and I color the inside. So there you have it. Hi Jude! Nice to see you. Hi da die die. Hope she's well. Thank you. Um, so now once I work it as an, uh, um, I kind of do it like an assembly. I cut all my strips. I decorate my strips or use paint, you know, patterned paper. I color my ed edges all up. And then the next step is I emboss it. So usually I do quite a few beads at once. I'm, that's just how I do it. Oh, my eyeball. And you can also use fabric to do this. Um, because fabric is flimsy, you'll want to mix like water in Elmer's glue or Mod Podge and spread it around your fabric and let it dry. And then you cut your fabric into the strips. So I have this knitting needle and I don't know the size. I think it's, I think that's a two on it. So we're going to say size two. <laughs> and move my stuff around here so I don't spill nothing. Okay. You can use ultra thick embossing powder, clear, or you can use the fine, you know, the thinner stuff. It's up to you, whatever you want. And you need water. 
Mark stamp pad. This is Versamark. Works best. You can see it's well loved. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. Tater tot, tater tot. <laughs> Oh, Mark ain't got patience for beads. <laughs> so this will help give them their shine. So I just take my knitting needle and I roll my bead around. I go from one end down to the other, back and forth to make sure I'm well coated. Depending on what marker you use to color your end. Um... If it's a permanent marker, you don't have to worry about it bleeding onto your ink pad. So that's just whatever. You can also paint your edges with paint. Um, that's totally up to do. Up, up to do. Yes, up to do. Up to you. So this is a big bottle. I dump it into a small container and I have one of those, you know, glitter tray things. I just hold it over. And I sprinkle my powder over it. And I make sure I have it all well coated. And I have a paintbrush. Well, this is, yes, a paintbrush. But I tap off the extra. And then I go to the edges. And I brush away that loose embossing powder on the edges. Being careful as to not hit my bead. That's just what that's for. You don't have to do that. That's just a step I take. And we're going to move this out of the way. And now I'm going to take my heat tool. And I think many of you have seen this. <laughs> we're going to, because I used uh, washi tape, I got to be careful so I don't melt it. So you just got to be careful with whatever you're using. So I'm going to heat this up. And I just move my heat and tool back and forth. Not staying in one place too long. And you'll see it start to melt. There we go. And I like to roll it because sometimes if you put a lot on, it will, um, uh, what's the word? It'll kind of drip, I guess is the word I'm looking for. But it's got a glossy, glassy, like sheen to it now. And I just let it set there a minute. And then I decide if I want to do another coat of embossing powder. You can do several. That's totally up to you. So now I have a bead. This was done out of um, washi tape. So yeah, using yes, using the ultra thick embossing powder, there is a difference between that and the other embossing powder. And I can show you that. Let me grab... I will grab two of these beads here that I have not coated yet. Oh, well, all right. We'll do one of these. Okay. So this hasn't been done yet. All right. So here is a bead I made out of a painty paper. It's not been coated. And here is another one. This was done with paper and a gelato gelato uh, pen, you know, gelato, I don't know, gelatos, uh, you know, you guys know. <laughs> so one of these we will do with this one. We will use the ultra thick embossing powder. And this one, we will use the thinner embossing powder. So let me get, and you guys will be able to see the difference. I should do this on a tube bead. I don't have an extra tube bead handy, I don't think. Do I? Oh, here's one. This looks more like a tube. This will be easier to show. 
There we go. That'll work better. So we'll do a blue one with the ultra thick, and then I'll use... Okay, so this one is almost like a cylinder bead. It's got a little bit of a tapered edge. But this one is not done yet. So, okay, this one was made on a toothpick. So, I can't use my knitting needle, so I will use a toothpick. So, this one will be with the ultra thick. So, let me roll that around on here and I press it down get it on my edges the knitting needle will get gunky but that's easily fixed you stick it in some goo gone let it set a second pull it out and you can wipe it right off so yes all right so that is for the ultra thick so we will sprinkle my ultra thick powder on here You'll be able to tell the difference. You you can see the difference. We're going to tap that off. And I'm going to brush off this edge. If you happen to leave. Well actually we'll just do that. We're just going to stick that back in there. Okay. I'm going to show you guys. I've got embossing powder on the tip of my knitting needle. Let me focus. Hopefully it will we'll focus. Okay. So I've got embossing powder on the edge of my needle there. So I'm just going to leave that. And I'm going to show you guys how to clean it. So that is the ultra thick. This one is the um, fine embossing powder. So we're going to use that one on this one. And again, you can either roll your, move your hand or move your pad. And just make sure you get it nice and coated. I kind of angle it to get up on the sides there. To really get it coated. It's up to you like. Okay. So that's that. I cover up this. And use my spoon, and I'm going to put some. I believe this is the fine embossing powder. It still works. You could do like a couple, a couple coats, and it will work. So now, okay. Let me move these out of the way because you don't want to put your heat tool in that. I'll slide you out of my way and I'm going to heat these up and I'm going to kind of move them closer together so I can we'll do this one first this is the thin embossing powder and you'll be able to see it start changing This one doesn't drip as much as the other one. Okay. So there's that one. It's got the a gloss to it now. So we're going to... Oh, I don't know where my foam piece went. So we're just going to hold that in our hand a second. So now here's this one. With the ultra thick. And you'll be able to see it start changing there. It's slowly rotated around. And you'll see that the heat is getting to the end of the needle there. Now seeing that embossing powder, which is okay. And you'll see, you can see a difference. Like, one looks a little glassier. Ooh, that's hot. You can see the difference. One's a little glossier than the other, but that's if I did two coats onto this one, I would get the same effect. Okay, so now I'm going to clean my knitting needle because I've got this embossing powder on there that's melted. It comes right off. It'll come right off. So you want to let it air dry for a couple seconds before you touch it because it will, you'll ruin it if you don't let it set long enough to dry. 
So if you look on my needle here, I've got embossing powder. <coughs> it wipes right off. <coughs> Hi, Shannon. <coughs> Thanks for stopping in, Lisa. The embossing powder will just pick right off. Like, you can rub your thumb up on it. Whatever. It, it wipes clean. And if it and if it starts to get too sticky from the Versamark or whatever you're using, stick it in some Goo Gone for a second and wipe it. And it wipes right clean. It's clean. So now I'm going to show you how to get um, some pattern design or something. We're going to stick this back in its bag. That's going to go in there. Hurry back, Cheryl. Okay. So, on the tapered beads, let's move these others out of my way really quick here. On the tapered beads, if you use pattern paper, that, you know, scrapbook paper, it's already got a pattern on there. So you don't really have to be precise. With these, if you want your edges to be a specific color, then you're going to color your edges. If you want the middle of your bead to be a certain color, you color that part. Um, you can make it rainbow, but because your beads are made, whoops, because you cut your beads and one end to the other end, let me find a paper here and show you. All right. So if these were laying on this, if I cut these out from this paper here, let's see here. Put you over there. Nope, you down here. There we go. All right. If I was to use this paper here to cut my flowers, or shoot, not my flowers, my beads. I got flowers on the mind. All right. This is how these would have been cut from the paper. Wide end, short end. So wide end, short end, wide end, short end. Like it's zigzag. So when I rolled my beads, I'm going to have blue at one end and orange at the the at other. On my next one, orange is going to be at the bottom and blue is going to be down here. So it's going to be the opposite. If you're doing a tube one, it's going to have the same pattern across the bottom regardless. Whereas with this, you're cutting from one end to the other. You're going to have an opposite. If that makes any sense, you'll have an opposite way of each one's going to be different. Like um, one end's going to be blue and one end's going to be orange. There's going to be a difference in it. And I just got a message from little C, Carrie. She said to tell everybody hi. And she's not allowed to move. She got in trouble by the doctor. She's naughty. So she's on a no movement bed rest. Oh, let me move that out of the way. So if I want a pattern on these... I got out my Delusion paints here. As if I didn't have enough stuff out already, you know. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a couple of my Delusion paints here. Um, I think I'll use that one. 
What's this one? Uh, Pure Sunshine. Oh, here we go. Whoops. We'll use Pure Sunshine, Rose Quartz, and Campso Teal. I'm going to use these three colors. Actually, nope, we're going we're gonna to just put yellow down. Yellow, blue, and pink. I always use those colors, but that's okay. <laughs> so, take my lids off here. It's so funny that um, ouch. some of these, well, that one has less paint because it was open when we, like, it was uh, broken when we got it. I need to clean my lids off. They're a little tight. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So I got some paint brushes here. So I'm going to move these out of my way a little bit. All right. So I'm just going to paint stripes on this. And I want my bees to be the same directional, like the same colors. So I'm just going to line these up like this. And I'm going to got to move this paintbrush because I'm not using that for this. So here's one, two, and three. All right, so I got three colors. Whoops. So I'm going to do that. I know I did too. Well, it's going to get messier. <laughs> They're just, we're just starting. So I'm, I want my base. So the edge of my bead, um, where's that blue one go? Oh, right here. Okay. This will work. Alright, so these were done with um paint. The same way I'm doing this, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. So this is that's how I got these colors right here. Orange, yellow, red. Okay, except for we're gonna go a blue, yellow, and I think I want to change my pink. No, we're keeping it. Okay, so I'm gonna go blue, yellow, and then pink. Uh, blue, no, let's see, blue, how do I want to do it, blue, pink, yellow, yeah, blue, pink, yellow, yep, that's it, blue, pink, and yellow, okay, first you got to figure out which way you're going to do it, <laughs> I got a mess over here already, I, my, my table's six foot long, and I've got most of it covered, Yes, Cheryl, we're going to paint paper now. <laughs> so I want a design on the, a pattern. So we're going to start with some blue. And with Dilutions paint, you don't need a lot. And I need my book. Where's my book? One second, y'all. Okay, so I am going to lay these actually in my book here, and I'm going to paint them in this, because I don't want to waste this paint. All right. So I'm just going to paint this. One thing with Dilutions paints versus the acrylic is it dries differently. Where like acrylic paint will kind of stick to itself if you have it on top of something. So now I'm going to use pink. 
and we're just going to take it off the lid there and I'm it's okay if it gets into the blue that there and now yellow gotta move my hand down which I'm okay if the yellow gets in with the pink and then we're going to come back to the blue and the blue is going to get in with the yellow which is fine it's going to make a greenish color. I got to move these up because I'm running out of room down here. Okay. So now we're going to go back to pink. I kind of like them lined up so I have so they're symmetrical with each other. That's just whatever preference you that's up to you. All right, and now we're going to end with yellow. Oops. Uh, no, don't stick to my finger. No. Well, it did. There we go. If you want to blend your colors, you have to do it while it's wet. Otherwise, you can let it dry, but <laughs> that's up to you. All right, so that's good enough. So I'm going to wipe. I'm going to move these real quick so they can dry I'm gonna let them air dry and this is cute so I'm just gonna wipe in my book here and get all this paint off that I can and I have several bottles of water sitting here to rinse my brushes out in. I have three to be honest. One to wash it all off, one to rinse it, and then one to rinse it again. <laughs> oh, I forgot to wipe that one clean. Whoops. Okay, that's all right. It happens. We get for a get for, and I didn't wipe that one off either. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to set my book off on the side there. All right, so I'm going to um, move this paint out of my way before I make a mess with it. Man, I got the hiccups going on. Put my lids on. Because I'm clumsy. Come on. There we go. And I spill things a lot. Or things spill because of me a lot. So I'm going to clean it. Out of my way. I'm constantly wiping up my surface. It's like, I don't know why lately, but it's been really bad. And I lost my paper towel. Where did my paper towel go? Oh, I don't know. All right. Okay. Uh, Delusion paints dry quicker. So they don't, um, they don't stay tacky long, as long as acrylics would. Um, we are too, Cheryl. I hope you stay safe, girl. We're, I'm so over these storms. We had one come in last night. All right, so I'm going to dry these really quick, just to make sure they're 100% dry. Whoops. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, these are cute. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab some of these over here. Oh. Okay. I gotta get my pillow to sit behind my back. Okay. Yeah, there's one supposed to be hit in Oklahoma, so I'm keeping all of them in my thoughts and prayers. I've got um my stepdad's daughters live out that way. Oh, goodness, Kiki. <laughs> All right, so now if I wanted to decorate the the bead, um, it's harder to do on these because they the way they roll up. So if you want to decorate, I'll show you how to do that on this. We'll do that in a minute. So these ones are done. I am going to roll these. So when you roll a tapered bead, Whatever's on the bottom is going to be your outside edge of your bead. The, the thick, the wide end. So this is blue. So if I was to take, um, say I wanted my edge to be black, okay? We're not going to do it with that. Um, no, we'll, we'll do this one. Okay, say I wanted my edge to be purple. Because these are just a testing one, I will do it like this. We'll find a piece of paper here. Okay. Say I want my outside ends on my bead to be pur uh, purple or whatever color you choose. You paint it or you will um, use a marker. I'm going to use this marker here. So I'm going to want like a purple colored edge. So I'm just going to color the edge of this a little bit here. I'm just going to run my finger up it to blend it into the pink a little bit. And you can make it as thick as you want. It, that Whoops, that's up to you. Um. Alright, whoops. So I just wrote on myself twice. Hi, Miss Mary, Mary, Mary. Oh, oh, Janie, I stay safe. All right, so what you're going to do, I wanted my ends to be purple, say, on this one, okay? So once your marker is dried, you're going to roll it. When you roll these, there's, it's your preference, whatever works for you. Some people hold it this way so they can watch the design to make sure, you know, the, the tapered's right. Because when you roll these, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. When you roll these, you want your ends to be, you want to keep it centered. You want to keep this piece of paper centered. So as you roll, you're going to notice that you're going to lose that, per, like your, your colors are going to be gone. Okay, so now I'm in the pink. So as I'm rolling, you're going to lose that. You're going to change your color. Your color is going to be different as you go in. So if I was rolling it wonky, I don't have purple on this side. So you got to make sure when you do tapered ones, you keep it centered because it's hard to get it back where it needs to be. So now I'm going to the pink, and I'm just carefully moving with my, my pinkies under here. And I'm just lightly moving it to make sure it's where it's got to be. And depending on how much paint you put down is how much that color will show. So as you can see here, I have very little pink on that edge, which is okay. And now I got yellow, so my yellow is slowly going away, and I'm getting that green colored. And now I'm going into that blue, and now the pink, and it's just going to keep going. Now I'm getting like an orange color from the yellow. And as you wind it, you're going to keep that centered, like in the center of that, that paper roll. And then I, I take it and hold it tight, and I put my thumb and finger like this and pinch it. and 
I make sure my glue's coming out of my bottle. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take, and I use a lot when I do this spot like this. I have a lot of glue on there. You don't have to do a lot. I do because as I roll it, it's going to squish out. And it's going to help seal all the rest of this bead in. And I get it off my finger and I just rub it around that entire bead. Just like that. And let me turn my focus on again. I hate autofocus so bad. I wish it would just like focus and not worry about it. Will it focus maybe? Come on. <laughs> it doesn't want to focus. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> just focus. Maybe. But anyways, you guys can kind of see it. I don't know why it doesn't want to focus. I hate the focusing. It just looks blurry to me. Let's try it with that. There we go. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay, see? I got the purple, pink, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, orange. So it changed my colors. So now to get it off from here, I just push it off. I always let it set a second so that way when I push it off, my paper doesn't go all wonky. So there you have that. And now, if when you roll it like that, you're going to get your end is going to kind of like have a little spot right here on the edge where it's going to, it looks like it, you know, it's not there right. You can trim that. Or you can leave it. That's up to you. I usually just run my scissors around it just to make it to where it looks a little even. So there's not that edge. And that's all I that's all I do. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's. I think it's a cleaner look. It's just a personal preference for me. I just make it trimmed up and make it look nice like that. So that's how you get your edges a specific color when you do these. If I didn't want purple on my end, I would just simply roll my bead. And I will have blue on my ends. And it's going to go pink, yellow, then the greenish color, and back to blue, pink. And the thinner your strip down here, um, Where'd the other one? Didn't I do three or did I just do? Okay. The thinner your strip at the end, um, if you have it extremely thin, you're going to want to put glue further down because otherwise it's not going to have much to stick to it. So once you do these, you'll get used to like how to position your fingers and how to uh, hold it and um, just like it'll, it'll be easier for you. I just got paint all over my finger. I took a little bit off right there, which I can touch that up if I want. If you don't feel like you got enough uh, glue, just put a little bit more glue on your finger and then just rub it down. So this one, I actually, the paint peeled off from that. So all I have to do is just touch that up if I wanted to. So that's how you get them. Totally different. Hi, Barb. Nice to see you, sweetheart. Everybody does their beads different. Um, I'm not an expert at making beads by no means. So... If what I do doesn't work for you, you'll just have to find what works for you best. Now, you can go small, like extremely tiny. Um, that's up to you. I, let me cut one that's super tiny, and I will show you. I will, I will cut one that's super tiny. So, this is the end. Okay. 
So we're going to go at about a quarter of an inch at the end there. Whoops. Yeah. About a quarter of an inch. See that thin strip right there? That's thin. I can go smaller. It's probably going to give me hell. So we're at about an eighth of an inch right here. Oh, whoops, this end first. Okay, so that's an eighth of an inch, quarter, big difference in sizes. There's a half and there's three quarters. Okay, so um, let me color this really quick. Um, I'm just going to use this paint really quick here. Okay, well, no, we'll do purple. I'll just do a purple one really quick. Paint this paper really quick, like, and so you guys can see the difference in sizes when you roll them. All right, so I'm just going to paint this purple. I know people in here like purple. <laughs> Mary Marlowe. <laughs> Kiki's not too well. Kiki likes purple. I know Little C likes purple, and I think who else? There's quite a few people. I'm not really much into purple. Like I like it. It's okay, but like I'm a pink girl. I like pink. So I'm just gonna paint this really quick. And that's good enough for me. And I got my wipe off book over here. I'm going to use just put some of that in there. Rinse my brush out. And I'm going to pick these up so they don't stick to my mat because that acrylic paint will peel up off from this mat and it'll be stuck to my uh, papers. So I'm just going to wipe this up. So I don't have a mess there and I can show you the next step. So we're going to let them two dry and I will show you how small you can go with the beads. So I'm going to let that, <laughs> I'm going to let that dry. I know. Oh, you like elephants, Barb? Oh, I got some, I got a, um, I got a napkin with elephant on it. I think elephants are adorable. The baby ones are, are my favorite, I have to be honest. Well, anything that's any creep any animal that's a baby is adorable usually. So So this is a smaller one and it, it once you get used to it, I would suggest starting with wider beads if you're first starting out to get the feel. Because the smaller you go, the more difficult it is. So you just want to make sure you keep it centered at all times so you're you know if you're doing certain colors you're going to want eat your ends to match you don't want blue on one side not the other because it's cattywonky so you kind of want to make sure your beads or your paper is staying centered just all you do is that it's just by how you hold your hand I just sit usually and watch TV, watch a movie or videos or something when I make these. And I'm about, let's see, an inch and a half. And then I start adding my glue. Oh, why are you so stuck in there? I probably put, I think I put too much glue in here when I filled it the other day. All right. So now I'm going to roll it. And you do want to be careful if you have thin, uh, the tips are thin because you can tear your paper. So you definitely want to do it with a gentle hand so you don't rip your paper. 
if you accidentally rip it, you can fix it as long as it's not too bad. I could rip one so I can show you. So if you look, look at the difference in sizes of these. See how this one here looks a little rounder. It's all just by how you cut your paper. And you can make it look rounder even. I will show you that in a second. So we're going to let that one dry. And we'll roll this one up. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot I was going to give something away. Pink and blue for you, Janie? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I love pink. Like, I used to hate it. Green used to be my favorite color. And then I just, I like pink. When I got older, pink just was my color. So you just want to like watch it as you're doing it. And if you want to make sure you're, if you want more of one color, you color more section of that color. So if I wanted more yellow in this or more pink, I would have done, I would have colored more. Versus what I did. And trial and error. Just work on like different color combinations and things. You can make some really pretty stuff. Um, and like I said, if you're doing tube beads, the long skinny, you know, the one size beads. You can print, you can make your designs and print it out on paper. Um, if you have an inkjet. Let me do this really quick and I will show you something or tell you anyways. If you have an inkjet printer and you want to use your image, but you're afraid your image is going to bleed. Okay. You can use, oh, where do I have it in here? Probably not. It's probably on the porch. Okay. You can get some acrylic spray. It's like a clear coat spray. You just lightly spray it. Just a light coat. Let it dry. And your image is going to be fine. It will seal it to where it won't run. It's just a trick. Alright. So now these are. These two are almost dried here. Oh, thank you Mary. That means a lot. Um, these tools are, they're not that expensive. And let me tell you, if you got arthritis, your hands cramp, I cannot recommend these enough. Like it's, it's ridiculous. These are awesome. I do have two other tools and I can show you those at another time because they're on the other side of the craft room and I'm blocked in by a box. So yes. Yep. And glitter. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know if the hairspray would hold it to keep the ink from smearing. I haven't tried that, but that's a good, hi Lynn, <laughs> that's a good question. I'd like, I would, I could try that. I would, I would have to see because that I don't know. So this is the quarter inch bead. This is going to be a quarter inch bead. See, you can see how small that is. So as before, you're just going to do your best. I have to wear my glasses when I do this. And look through the trifocal part. Um, you're just going to slowly roll it. As best as you can. Keeping that little piece centered. And when I'm. Sometimes when I do the tapered beads. I will occasionally drop. A slight drop of glue down there. Just to help keep it in place. It's, it's not going to hurt it with the tapered bead. So like if you're worried that it's going to go wonky on you. You can just put a slight drop of glue in there and it will help keep it in check, basically. And because this is a thin bead, I'm actually going to uh, run a good amount up this. And then I'm going to squish it all throughout that. I would say if you're doing small ones, you definitely want to glue as you go every couple turns to help secure it into place so it doesn't move around once the bead's made.
So there you have it. A little bead. That's a little one. And you can go even smaller. With this one, I will roll it a few times and I'm going to glue it because this is a thin, this is going to be thin. So I want to make sure my paper is going to stay where it needs to stay. So I'll roll a couple, make sure I stay lined up and I'm going to glue it down. You can use Mod Podge, you know, whatever glue you want to use, just know it's going to become sticky. So your fingertips are going to get sticky. So you want to be careful. Um, if your fingertips start to get sticky, you just hold your bead like this, and then you baby wipe and wipe your hands off. And I, I have a washcloth next to me, and I dry my hands off so my hands aren't wet from touching the baby wipe. And then I come back to what I was doing. Um, because otherwise it will tear if you get your bead wet. So then I'm just going to... Every couple turns, I'm just going to go and glue it as I go. And this bead's actually going to be cattywonky because I want to show you what happens. Because it does happen, and I mean, you don't have to throw the bead away. You can keep it because if you can make another one similar, cattywonky, you can actually glue them together and make a bigger bead and now I'm at the end so I'm going to glue that and this one's all cattywonky let me autofocus here so I can show you why it's cattywonky if you look <laughs> can you see the left side is not oh, focus come on it's probably not going to focus. Okay, the left side is not tapered, whereas the right side is tapered. You can see the difference. That's okay. It happens. You don't have to throw it away. You can reuse it. You can make another one just like it and glue it together once it's dry. Or, if you're careful, you can pinch it. And get it in track where it's got to go. And you're going to have a smaller, like a spacer bead, you can call it. And it'll be like a spacer bead. And, yeah, there's several different designs of beads that you can do. It's just, um, like, shapes. Uh, a teardrop. I can show you how to do a teardrop bead. That's simple. And they are cute. So there's those. So I instead of coloring these right now, I'm just going to use some of my scrap papers already made up. Um, oh, my back hurts. All right, we're going to use this one here. Oops, I want that like that. And I'm going to do... A teardrop shape so first I got to trim my edge and how I trim my edge to where I get my tapered beads I meet one corner up at the one corner at the quarter inch mark right here or I mean it's up to you I always do the littlest one so I go up to the corner of that one and then I'll take my bottom let me line that up there so you guys can see that let me turn it this way. This might work. I'll probably have to zoom out just a little bit. Okay. That, now you can see it. So I'm going to line this end up here on the quarter inch. And there's that glare. And then this end I'm going to take and I'm just going to slightly move it just past where my cut line is. Like I'll, I'll get like a sliver of paper on that corner. You want it just, just a sliver of that. And you're going to cut from the wide end. So this is my wide end. That's going to be my little end. So I'm just going to hold it and cut it down. And you'll see it looks like a triangle. You know, it's tapered. 
don't keep that. Well, you can keep it for scratch, but you're not going to be able to make bead. It won't be a bead won't turn out right with that. So then what you're going to do is the blue end was my, was it the blue end? Yeah. So because the littler, the thinner end was where I, let me turn it back this way so you guys can understand it. This was my skinny end. This was my wide end. So I'm going to move this over here. The wide end is now the blue side. And I'm going to move that at a inch mark. And then I'm going to move this one at just under the quarter inch one right there. And I'm just going to, whoops, sometimes your paper will move. I'm doing it from a different angle. So this is different for me. <laughs> Okay, so we're good. All right, I'm going to cut that there. And now the next end I'm going to cut is this end because this is where my blade's at. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, um, uh, Lynn, I didn't see your question. It is called a paper bead tool, a paper, paper bead roller. Um, they're on Etsy. Um, I will link the description in the video when I'm done with them. Uh, they have several different types of bead rollers. There's going to be several people that sell different ones of these. Um, so just keep an eye out. That's, you know. They're all made about the, sa the same. So now my thicker end is going to be this side. So I'm going to angle that up to the one inch mark. And this one's just going to be over a hair. And hold my paper. And I'm going to trim it down. All right. To get the more rounded, rounded, rounded bead, <laughs> I'm going to cut my paper at like three quarters of an inch. And this, the thinner end, I am going to move at about um, a quarter inch. So I want a wider edge on that. I don't want it to be thinner. I want it to be a thicker tip. So we're going to go to a half one and I'm going to move it just under a quarter here. Okay. I'll show you. Whoops. Come on. Give me my paper. So as I was saying before, if you're using paper that's got a directional pattern, one of your papers is going to be one way and the other is going to be the other way because you're, it's tape, you know, it's one, this is going to have a blue tip in the middle and this one's going to have an orange one because one end is wider than the other. Yeah, you can split the end of a bamboo skewer or you can um, grab a couple toothpicks and pinch them together just to slide your uh, the bead on the paper on there and roll it that way. There's plenty of different um, like DIY ones you can look up. Whoa, excuse me. Somebody also have has used a straw stir or coffee stir stick. You can be careful and cut a slit down this down into it and use that as a bead roller also. That's just whichever uh, Q-tip. Uh, you can use a Q-tip center. Hi, Chewy! Rawr, rawr, rawr! <laughs> yeah, you, yep, you can use um, a, uh, a pen. Take the inside of a pen out and cut a slit down it and use that also. Yep. So these are going to give me different. Okay. First, I'm going to show you how to make a teardrop bead. You're going to roll it almost the same, but not the same. So for a teardrop bead, you're going to roll it, but you're not going to worry about keeping it um, symmetrical. You're going to want one end to be wider than the other so you're just going to roll it cockeyed oh i gotta go the other way i'm backwards 
Okay, there we go. I'll show you. Let me just roll it. There's videos on YouTube on how to make these. I'm, I'm probably not going to. I've only done a couple of them like this, so I'm probably not the best teacher on that one. <coughs> but basically, you're. You, you want to pull it out a little bit. Come on. Okay. It's going to look like a teardrop. It's fatter at one end and littler at the inner. I call it like a candy corn. I think it looks like a candy corn like this. But that's how you would get like um, a teardrop one. There's different videos on how to do it. I haven't really messed with those, so I don't really know. So like this one's going to have orange on the outside. And it's going to roll up. My center color is going to be the blue because that's how it was done. Oh, here we go. I got it now. Okay, so you roll it up like that, but then you just push one end. There we go. Yeah, I got it that time. Okay. I'm probably still not getting it 100%, but it's close enough for me. So you would push the opposite end in. And, like, you can play with it, manipulate it to get to where it looks rounder. I mean, that's up to you. To get more of a rounded bead, um, you want this one. You're going to want the one that has the edges aren't that far off when you cut it. It's going to roll up the same as the tapered. Oh, I got the yawns. It's going to roll up about the same as a tapered. Did I do this one? No. Okay. The only difference is, is your edges are not going to be as long as the other. Whoops. Pull it off. I didn't get quite enough glue on there, and that does happen, so you just want to take it off. Or, you know, you just want to make sure you get enough glue on there. So if you look at the difference between those two because of the way I cut it. Bye, Mary. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good afternoon. Some people will roll their beads this way. I I find it, I mean, if it's okay, you can. I just, I'm not comfortable doing it like that. I don't, I don't know. To me, it, it's weird. Uh, you can roll this way also. I got a paper cut. That is not cool. Um, but for me, I just find it easier for me to roll it like this. I, I To me, I feel like I have more control on the way the paper is going. If you want a real thick bead, I'll show you how you do that. But see, the, the closer your tip is to your end, like the wide end, if you have a thinner tip, you're going to get the long skinny uh, bead, the tapered one. If it's a thicker tip, you know, and you're, well, this one's not even the one I wanted to show. Um, if you're, if this was the same size almost, like if it was about that size, tapered down, it, your, your bead's going to roll, be different, like, just like that. So these are all different. It's just, it just goes on how you, how you cut your strip. And let me roll this one up, and I will show you how to do two papers. Um, some people call it like the Pandora style beads. It, 
It doesn't take long once you get the hang of it. It doesn't take that long. Alright, now let me move that out of the way. Hi, witchy woman. Nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by. All right. You've been in one of my lives before. I'm pretty sure, I think, a couple weeks ago, maybe. Oh, goodness, Lynn. <laughs> yes, you can use quilling tools. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so to do... I need another piece of paper here. A scrap piece here. All right, um, I'm going to show you how to do the... Where's my tapered end? Okay. To get a tape... Uh, a, a wider bead like or like a bubble bead I guess you could call it or one that's more of a uh, like the Pandora style two pieces of paper and you're gonna cut them both the same size you don't want one wider than the other they got to be the same size so I'm gonna go at a half inch on the wide end and just under that on the other end here and I got both of them together so I'm going to cut it together and those are going to be the same size so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be rolling these together so I am going to about half right here because when you roll two pieces of paper together the bottom one and the top one aren't going to line up on the bottom so your bottom paper you want to be higher than the other and you can tape it or you can glue it you just want it to hold still basically so i'm going to do i guess that's about a half an inch yes it's about a half an inch down just over a half inch. I'm going to glue it. And I'm going to keep that in line. And you don't want to glue your... Oh, did I, oh whew, I thought I just dropped something. <laughs> um, you don't want to glue it all down at once because your paper, when you roll paper, it's going to line up different. You're going to get a bubble in there. So just glue a little bit of that end. So it's going to, it'll, it'll open up, you know, it's not all glued. And you're going to slide that bottom piece of that one in and you're going to start rolling. And as you roll, oh, see that edge, I didn't get that glued down. So let me glue that. I didn't get it close enough to the edge there. All right. And as you roll, you want to keep those two pieces of paper together as you roll. Because otherwise you'll have an outline on the other. So I have a white paper underneath. So I want to make sure my two pieces of paper stay the same. This way takes a little longer. But the beads are adorable. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's tricky holding it to get it to where it lines up right. Sometimes it's easier to go this way with, the, with doing, whoops, doing it this way. Because then you can see to make sure that that edge isn't coming out. And if you remember, it. When I started, I had just over a half inch of the white sticking up. If you look here, I have about a quarter of an inch of it. See how well it almost completely went to the edge? That's what you want.
and you want to make sure you glue both of those strips. So you want glue in between both of those when you work your way around your bead. And now that bead is way bigger, rounder than my other one. And I'll show again. I'll make a, a littler, littler. <laughs> I like my words. I'll make a smaller one. So I got two pieces of paper. And we're going to go about here. Yeah. It's not much of a tapered, but it's tapered. And again, I'm going to just do a little bit of glue here at that tip. And I'm going to lay that top one down. Actually, I'm going to show you what it does. We'll use this. I'm going to show you what it does if you line them two up directly to each other. I will show you what happens. Hi, Kathy. What you making for dinner? I'm hungry. So with this one, I'm going to hold it this way. I can still see where my thing is, but I want to keep it them two pieces of paper together. And I will get a white border on this one because of the way I cut it. I didn't cut it straight. But I'm just showing you what happens. When you glue those papers together end to end, this is what's going to happen. You can't keep it straight for one because you're getting a bubble in there. But look, do you see that? That's what happens when you glue your papers together in the exact end. If I would have glued it like this, separate, then my ends wouldn't be over. This end would not be underneath hanging over. Oh, I can't have shrimp. Ugh. Okay, so by me gluing it at the end, when I rolled this, my paper stuck out. The underside paper stuck out. And when you're doing two sheets, always use scrap paper underneath the one you're using. Because you ain't going to see what's on there anyways. So, let's do this again. I pulled that apart. And now, I'm going to move that down. I'm going to glue this back down if I can. It's all wonky now. Did I get glue? Oh, yeah. Oh, my glue's there. So, I'm going to... Pull that down now. And you see I got that lip right there. I'm allergic to shrimps. And I'm going to slide that in there now. And I'm going to hold it like this so that way I can keep these edges together. That's why I'm holding it like this, to keep that from going wonky. And I'm just going to watch and make sure it lines up. And sometimes you have to hold it and kind of like make it tighter so it's a little tighter. And you can do three sheets of paper like this. I mean, it's... Now, if you look, I don't have no white sticking out. See that? That bottom piece is not sticking out. You can see it right here. Because I glued it down from where that start was. And now I'm going to run glue in between these two pieces here. So I can make sure they stick to each other. And then glue on the underside of that one. And then we're just going to roll it up. 
just like that. And oh, if you if you tighten it too tight, you're gonna have hell trying to get it off. So then we have a little chunky one again. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Lynn. I hope you give it a try. I have a whole bunch of, like, painted papers, jelly plate prints, and they make pretty paper beads because you don't get this, you can't get the same thing, you know. So, um, like, this one is um, off from my sprays, from spraying. You know, spraying on um, different things that I use. It was a scrap piece that was in my box. So, this has all sorts of different sprays on there. There's some, um, I see some shimmer in there. So, it's probably got some, like, uh, different spray. Uh, what is it? Tattered Angels. That's what, I couldn't think of the word. So, I can trim this down and make some. Um, the other thing I'm going to show you is... This is my favorite thing to do. Um, do I want to paint on and then do it? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to paint. We're going to paint again. Okay. So I'm going to do a purple and a dark, a light purple and a dark purple here. Let me move my box. Um, don't I have a dark, do I have a dark, yes, I have a dark purple. I'm actually just going to use that illusions one, light purple and a dark purple here. Yeah. Okay. And the, okay, this is a uh, copy, copy paper. I think it's 20 pound. Yeah. The thicker your paper, the harder it is to roll your bead. You don't want to use watercolor paper because that ain't going to happen. Um, cardstock, be careful because sometimes if it's thick cardstock, it's going to roll differently. So, um, magazine pages is a really good one. National Geographic, a lot of people use those. Um, some people use um, newspaper flyers. You can use those. Um, catalogs. Um, magazine catalogs, you can use those. You just cut your strips. Um, I actually have some. Give me a second here. Okay. Come on, one more. Over here. Okay. These are actually posters. You know, like um, a poster hanging up on a, in a building or something. These are advertisement posters that are cut into the strips. And you can see how little that is. Like, look how little that is. Okay. And these are long. <laughs> so let me show you really quick on this. I lost my oh, Here it is. I'm going to show you on this one. Oh, get, it, get it going the right way here. This is going to make a different type of bead also. Like, it's because it's so long. Okay, magazine papers is tricky because it's it's uh, got a glossy. So you just got to be careful and kind of... That's the only thing with these. It's not a very good start. Some okay, there we go. Okay, I got... Oh, nope, I didn't get it. Okay. That's going to be tricky. Let me put a little glue on here. And hopefully this will help tack it a little bit so it stays in my roller. That's the one thing I found about magazine pages is they don't stay in the roller as good. I better put this lid back on that for a second. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. That helped. So this, I'm just going to roll it up like I do my others. And it's tapered, so there's going to be tapered edges. But you can get some really amazing, amazing beads out of junk mail. Magazine papers. Um, newspaper clippings. Uh, brochures. 
travel magazines. Uh, National Geographic is a really nice one because the paper is really good. Oh, I'm not even showing you guys. Sorry. <laughs> I was keeping that for myself. See, and because these ends are so little, you really want to put that glue down. And I usually, sometimes, I just squeeze it right all over the bead to make sure I get a good coat. And if your bead does, if the tip of your paper does not want to stick, like right here, it's coming back up. I'm just going to add some more glue right on that tip and then spread it down. And your glue is going to dry. Wait, my finger's off here. See, now that bead is bigger than any of these that I did. Because that paper is way long. Yes, yeah, so you can use book pages and music papers. Um, hi, Sabrina. You could use music paper and stuff um, on the tapered. It would just look different. Let me, I have a music paper here. I can show you. Oh, we got a dog barking. Oh, where's my dog? Come on. Oh, no. I don't know about y'all, but I do not like the smell of coffee. And this is a coffee dyed music paper that I did. It stinks. I don't like the smell of coffee. So if I'm going to use the, if I'm doing like a music, music sheet, okay. First, I got to trim that edge. So I want to trim this edge down to where it needs to be. Let me move this so you guys can see. So I'm just a little bit off just to give it that angle. And you just, just a hair on this edge. Just a hair. You don't want to shave it a hundred percent. Like you don't want it to like. Um, how do I, how do I explain it? Um, you want very little on that edge. You don't want a a big wide piece, but you want just enough to say that you trimmed that edge. You see that? That's just a little bit. So then I'm not gonna keep this because that's scrap and it stinks like coffee. Now, this paper is actually longer than my other paper, so since this was the short end, I'm going to now make that, that's going to be my wide end. So, I actually should trim off a little more so I get more of the music notes. So, we're going to trim this again, and I'm just barely going to that edge. Let's see, right there. Alright, because I want more of the music in there than the end of the page. So we're going to trim that piece off now. Alright. So I'm going to make a half inch. No, we're going to go with a one inch. I'll do a one inch and then a half inch. So just barely at the edge there. So here's one music. And we're going to slide over to three quarters. Well, we'll go back to an inch. And we'll do that one. And you just keep going one rock one end to the other. Just rock one end to the other. I always leave my blade at the end I start from. Like I ended here, so that's going to stay there because that's where my wide end is going to be. So I'm going to tilt that one up. And this one's going to be the shorter end. Because you don't want to cut from the little end, the skinny end. You're going to rip your paper if you do. Alright, so we're done with that. I will show you real quick how the music paper looks. So with a music paper with it being tapered, you're not going to see everything. You're going to see it here and there, but it's going to be hard to to see what um 
it's going to be hard to know what you're looking at, if that makes sense. Like, you won't see the detail. Let's see. You won't, you won't know that that's music paper. So, that's the only thing. You don't know that that's a music paper. It's still a cool looking bead. Don't get me wrong. But, you don't see the difference. So, like, this one is lighter colored. So, with it being tapered, you don't see the music print on the outsides on the tapered part. It could still be a really cool bead. And if you cut it right, like if I cut that right there, you could have a music note right there. Hi, Mary Mary. I hope you're okay and feeling good today. So now if I wanted to do a tube bead with the music paper, because a tube bead is long. Let me trim this edge off here. Make sure I'm flat here. There we go. And I'm going to keep that because that is going to be some cool to add to something. So I'm going to do go ahead and do like a one inch music. We'll do another one here. And yeah. Oops. There we go. Alright, so with that one, if you roll this, it doesn't really matter which, which side. I mean, you know. Rolling it like this, if you want to make sure you have the music notes showing on the end... then you want it to end on the music note part. Like, um, I wouldn't say there on this one. I would say here. So I'm actually going to cut this right about here. And I will show you why. All right. Before I glue it, I'm going to flatten my edge. So I just pull it off and I'm going to flatten that down making sure all my ends are pushed in and I got a nice smooth edge on there and now I'm going to glue that and that's about a half inch just over half inch is all I left to glue and I'm going to roll it around and I usually roll it around a couple times you know once or twice to make sure that edges are glued down on there and then I run it through my fingers and go like this. Make sure my edges are nice. And there's your music. Music note bead. I will call you after I get done, Mary. So that's how if you want like a specific thing. If you want a specific phrase or something on your bead, um, I'm not going to show how to do that today, but I will do a tutorial and show you how to do that. So right now, I'm going to show you a different thing that I like to do. And we're going to paint this. Only, only part of this is going to be painted. So let me grab a couple paintbrushes here. Because I cut my paper lengthwise, I'm only going to paint, I'm going to paint um, part of this, not all of it, because most of this is going to be covered. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of this. Do I want it like that? Yeah. And remember, you don't have to go only about maybe an inch, inch and a half, because that's all you um, need for the edge. All right, so now this lighter one.
and get a little more. There we go. Now, all I'm going to see on the edge of my bead is half of that, like that and that much of it. Okay. So let me take care of these. I'm going to let that dry a second. I have to use the little lady room. I'll wipe this up. I lost my baby wipes. Oh. I don't know how I... Oh, there they are. See, I don't know how I always lose my baby wipes, but I do. I might end up knocking over my embossing powder if I don't be careful. Come on. Okay. So, real quick. Wipe that up. And put it up on the side. When I come back from the little ladies room, I will show you what the giveaway is. And then we will do that after my next, after I show you how to do this next one here. So we're going to let this dry a second. I'm going to use the little lady room. And then I'll show you what we're going to do next. So I will be right back. Hi, Miss Nancy. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, y'all. <coughs> okay. It should be almost dried. Let me use the heat tool really quick. good so now say I want to bead with some texture or a design on the bot you know on it well if you have stamps you can make a design that's easy <coughs> so 
So I have a text message. <laughs> I have these flower stamps. They're like Mandela's. I think I said that right. So you're going to use some black ink. I'll turn this around. My stomach's growing. It's time to eat. So I'm going to just ink that up. Get it nice and juicy. And I don't see no ink on that one. I haven't used this ink pad yet, I don't think. Okay. So now that I got that all inked up and ink around the edge of that thing, I want to make sure I'm really inked. <laughs> okay, we got it, I think. There we go. We're good. I'm going to stamp my image. I probably, yeah, that'll be all right. So all I'm going to have is about half of this design. So hang on, let me do something really quick. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to cut my paper in half, almost half. It wasn't quite half because I'm only going to get half the design on one. Um, I line my paper up like this, and then I'm going to stamp, <coughs> excuse me, hi squirrel, I'm going to stamp, kind of center my stamp, and then I want to press it down, and now I have a design on that there, and let that set. So you're not wasting ink. That's how why I do it like this. You don't waste your ink. Then you do it again. Line it up. And a stamp. And if you look, see how it's fading in? Which I'm okay with that. I think that looks cool like that. This ink is going to be different than the other inks. Let me see if I have my... Okay. That's a Memento. I've never used that ink before, so I didn't know how it was going to be. So, we're going to use my archival here. Yep, Squirrel works till 8 on Mondays. All right, you want to have something handy to clean your stamp off with. So now I'm going to do the last one. See when this dries, it turns a different color, but you can still see it. I think that's really pretty. So I'm going to line that up. I'm only going to get part on that, but that's okay. So I'm going to use the Versamark, or not Versamark, this is Archival. And that might show up darker than that. So I'm just going to center it again and press. I'll make sure I wipe that up. And you can see what it does. It really didn't change the color. It's a little darker. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat set this so I can make sure that's 100% dry before my next step. Some inks are pigmented inks, so you have to heat set it. So once it's heat set, it will stay permanent. You just have to read on the back of your inks. All right, so now we're going to cut these. Into the strips. They're, these are going to be tube, tubular ones. Tubular, man. And I'm going to cut one at like a half inch here. 
and we're going to do this one at an inch. And this one's going to be at three quarters. And then we'll go to an inch. Oh, nope, we'll do a half. Right there. And I'll do three quarters on this one. There's them. Cut that one down. If, if you, if, if, I'm stumbling over my words. You can do whatever sizes you want. If you want a variety of sizes, then you just cut the different sizes. It's all up to you on how you want your beads to be. So that's just up to you. So. Now I'm going to roll my bead. And these are the two beads. So I really don't have to be particular on how I'm winding it. Just make sure that. When I'm done, I will flatten my edges. Pop that off, and I'm going to push my edges down so I can make sure my ends are flat. And I always take about a, a half inch or so. And I put my glue down. And again, you can use Mod Podge. You can use... Whatever glue. I'm using tacky glue because I feel it, it sticks better. And I just roll it around. And then where my end is, I just press it really good to make sure it's nice and adhered. And let me turn my focus on. There we go. You can see the texture in there of the stamp. See it? It's very subtle. But it's there. So let me do another one here. And if you're doing two, the two beads like this, they go fast. Like it's because you just wind it up, pop it off, flatten your edges. I always turn it one over the other. And throw some glue down. I always make sure I get quite a bit because it will squish out, which I'm fine with. But I want to make sure it's covered. And if you feel like you're getting a wonky, like a, um, this one kind of like a bubble in it, you can just peel it back a little bit and re-adhere it down. Just make sure you're pushing it really tight up against that other piece and it will go back into place sometimes you can roll it if you want if you don't want glue all over your hands whoops it don't bother me none so my ends are white so i'm i want a different end so if you don't have a marker to color your ends you can use paint so all you do is take a little bit of your paint and you're going to paint the edges. Careful so you don't get your design. And if you have a small enough paintbrush, you can kind of get inside and paint the inside there. And now your end's going to be purple instead of white. There we go. And now I'm going to set that up on the side to dry a second. And the same with this one. I'm going to do the lighter colored. So let me close that up. Rinse that off. And we'll do one light and one dark. So again, I'm just going to cover my ends. Stick my paintbrush down in there and turn it around. 
And sometimes that inner piece of paper will fold. You can see that there. I take a toothpick and just press it back through. And you can flatten that back out. It's that easy. And then back onto the other side here. And I'm going to cover that. All right. So why that dries, I said there was a giveaway. So, um, oh, thank you, Jada. Hi, Jada. How are you? All right. So that's what that looks like. And I will coat those. So, um, I was at Aldi's the other day looking for one specific thing because somebody in the lovely group had uh, tagged me in a post to another group called Flamingo Holics Anonymous. <clears throat> well, I joined the group and it's nothing but flamingo stuff and it's insane. But somebody posted something and I was like, oh, I want to go see if they have it. Well, they did, and I got it on sale. So I got me a flamingo bubble blower. <laughs> yeah. I had to get it. <clears throat> so um, one thing that I picked up while I was there I didn't even show squirrel this yet, but, um, was a trivet. It's a silicone trivet. Okay. Pretty cool. It's honeycomb shapes. Well, it was a two pack and I, it was $1.99. So I bought it. Oh, move this out of my way. Well, it was a two pack. So I got two. I don't need two. I only need one. So this one has been used. I have used it on my jelly plate. I also used it by putting paint on my surface here. Sticking it down and sticking it onto the paper. So this one has been used. Um, why these dry, I can show you how they look. Let me move these out of my way. So I have a piece of paper here and we'll just go ahead and use this purple craft smart paint here and I'm going to put a little bit down on here and then I'm going to use a paintbrush and kind of spread it out a little bit. Okay. Like that. And I got extra paint here, so we're just going to put it in my book over here on the side. Then I got everything else stuck up on, so hope I don't get paint on my phone. Okay, now, oh, I'm not going to use the one unused. I got to get mine out. <laughs> I almost grabbed the newest one. I'm going to press that down. And got paint on there. Look at that texture. Is that not awesome? So, and it works amazing on the jelly plate. And it's, I thought it was the coolest thing. Like, look at that. Distressed. If you do it numerous times, you'll get a distressed look with it. I could sit and do this for a while. Like, I thought it was so cool. And if I forget to wash this off, that's okay. I can take it to the sink in three hours. Run it under hot water. And a little bit of soapy water. And I have like a little scrub brush thing. And I can lightly scrub it and it comes right clean. So as long as you remember to wash it and not let your paint get too hard. It won't stick. It works awesome. So that is. It's going to be awesome on the jelly plate. 
And even if you don't have a jelly plate. I just did that without a jelly plate. And let me take that focus off. Sorry about that, guys. So that's what we're giving away. This is going to be given away. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I just used the new one. So I will wash this up really, really good. I'm sorry, you guys. This one was the one I used. This was the new one. But that's okay. We will wash it up. I can go pick up another one if it need to be because it was cheap. No, I didn't get it at Ollie's. Um, Aldi's. <laughs> that's funny. But I will wash it up. It'll come it comes clean. So, anyways. <laughs> See, we all have accidents. So this is what you're gonna get. <laughs> I will pick up a different one if you don't want this one because I accidentally used the wrong one. Um, sorry. But if uh, Kiki wants to do um, the honors, um, she can Nightbot. Hopefully Nightbot's nice. Um, you'll get this. And then I'm going to pick two winners tonight. Somebody will get this and somebody will get paper beads. These ones I will give away. And I will make up, um, I will cut some strips of paper, decorated paper for you. <coughs> Jada! All right. Jada won. <coughs> yeah, they wash right up. Yep. They wash right up. That is so awesome, Jada. Way to go. That is so awesome. And I can take this when I go meet Kiki in a couple weeks. If you don't want me to mail it to you, I can, um, when I go get, uh, see Kiki in a couple weeks again. Um, I think it'll be like after I get back from Missouri, it'll be like towards the end of June. I'm going to get with, uh, Kiki. That's awesome. And now we're going to see who's going to get the set of purple beads that I made. And I will finish them. I will emboss them. Um, which I can do a couple of them right now. Um, I'll emboss these ones while uh, we let Nightbot pick the next winner. And I will make up uh, my own personal pattern. It'll be my own design. And you will be the only one who gets that design, whoever wins this one. So, these will be specifically unique, one-of-a-kind spanky beads that you will win. Nobody else will have them. And, uh, like, if I have more than one bead to do, I always double it up. Oh, my gosh, Mary Marlowe. Is so awesome. Awesome, Mary. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Congrats, Miss Mary Marlowe. That's so awesome. So I will make up these beads and then um, I will be sending you a paper cut all ready to go. Um, I'll get with you later today. I'll give you a ring. Um, and I'll find out if you want the tapered ones or if you want them like these. The, the, uh, pattern papers. Yes, they're perfect. Well, that's so funny too. Yup. That's so funny. What's funny is when I was doing purple, I always think of Mary Marlowe because I know she loves purple. It's so funny. That's so awesome. <coughs> And I'm so happy that Jada won too. That's so awesome. And these look really pretty after they've been uh, heat embossed. Or not heat embossed, but embossed.
One thing I will say when you use the triple th uh, or ultra thick, ultra thick embossing powder, um, you want to rotate your whatever you're doing it with. You want to rotate it because sometimes if you get it too hot, the it will drip or run down to the other end. And you'll get it, it. It looks a little wonky. You can see like that looks a little wonky. That's okay. You can go over it again and it will fill in those little ridges. But you can see how pretty them look. Oh, I know. We're supposed to be getting them storms, Mary. I'm not looking forward to it at all. Not at all. <coughs> um, I figured since we haven't did get away giveaways in a little, a little while, and I'm still trying to catch up on some, I do have some that I got to get out. Um, I got to watch the video because I don't remember exactly which person it was that got one. But you'll get them. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be nasty. Um, but I have been making a lot of paper beads and, um, they will be for sale in the auction and I'm going to try and I don't know how many more I'm going to do. I've already got quite a few, like, of all these. And how I'm doing it is, um, some of them are going to be like packages of six. Um, if it was one sheet of pattern of, uh, paper. Then that's going to be one set. Um, they're going to be different priced. But they're going to be auctioned off. Um, I might just split them up into six uh, sets of six even. But um, I'm not going to show how I do these. I will say though that these ones here. I will have a set price on these. The, uh, the the melon balls and the ladybugs will have a set price because those take more time um, because of what I add what I do to them to get and how I do it um, they take more time to make so um, more steps so those are going to have a set price and there's going to be a limited amount of those but I will take orders for them um, I am going to be opening up an Etsy store, um, and Kiki is also going to be part of that. Um, I will, um, so if I have stuff left over, it will be going up in the shop. So the plan for New Year is going to be an Etsy store, but, uh, Squirrel and I, <laughs> Squirrel was offered a job. Um, I have a close friend who lives in Waco, Texas, and they own their own auto repair shop, and uh, Squirrel was offered a job, and nothing, we haven't decided nothing, nothing's been decided yet, but um, we will be taking a trip out there in July, um, he's going to check it out. Um, and so we may be taking up a residency in Waco. <coughs> We're not sure yet, but it is in the, being thought of. Um, it's a, it's a really good opportunity. And, um, kind of be stupid not to take it type thing. <laughs> Janie, um, I'll still be eight hours from Mary. So it's kind of funny. Um, she's like in the halfway point. But um, we will, we'll, we're going to travel out there in July and get a feel for it, decide. He's going to work for a few days while we're there to see if, because it's going to be, it's uh, as a mechanic, same thing he does now. A little, a little different though. Um, <laughs> not by airplane, Kiki. Um, but it's a really good opportunity for the both of us. Um, I also was offered a job while out there. Um, so, <laughs> um, we, uh, 
we will be taking a trip out there in July and deciding, and if so, we will be going sometime. I think we might end up having to wait till after we go to Florida for my daughter's wedding. I don't want to move in the winter time though, but I want to be up here for my mom's birthday and stuff, and my birthday. So um, it's all up in the air. We don't know yet, but um, if it happens, we will be offline for a couple for a little while. But if we wait until spring next year, then um, if we don't move by winter this year, we will be going by spring next year. Um, so, but it's a really good opportunity. And um, we're putting all the pros and cons, you know, and deciding. But it is a really good opportunity. So. Um, sometimes things happen and whatnot. So things happen for a reason or whatever, you know, you know how that saying goes. So, but, um, I'm, I never really like, it's not hard for me to pack up and leave. Cause like, I don't, that, it don't bother me none. I don't care. Um, but I'm close with my mom right now, so, like, a lot closer than we had been over the past 20 years, so, it's going to be a little difficult to leave her, but, well, I'm still working on things, so I'm not sure yet, we're not sure yet, um, but yeah, it's got some major pros, um, some really good pros, <laughs> um, it's just a matter of, you know, what's doable. It, I mean, I can always stay here and Squirrel can go there and work. <coughs> if that, you know, if we want that, I can, you know. There's def definitely a lot of um, things that we're going to be considering. So, but anyways. So we may have a really busy summer. But um, as far as, like, the tag challenge... I will do my best to have tags done. But if we do end up moving, I'm going to have to recruit one of my admins to do the tags for me. <laughs> That's so true, Lynn. Yeah. Well, um, the biggest thing is, like, here, um, because he gets paid, um, a, like, a, a week, kind of like a salary. It's not a salary, but he gets paid for each job he does. So if, you know, they're changing how they're getting paid. And because other people, you know, some people were high up there on the pole that they were getting, you know, $1,000 a week, regardless of the jobs that they did, which is not fair to those like Squirrel who busted his ass 50 hours a week and only gets this amount. Okay. Okay. So they took away a percentage of their pay, hoping to get the, you know, to get it all balanced out. And those who were up there were actually going to start working and doing their jobs for the pay versus just doing one job a day and still making their pay. <coughs> so it, you know, he got affected by it a little bit, but, um, this opportunity, he's going to be working less hours a week, um, way more money, almost doubled the amount, um, and because just of how much Matt knows and what he, oh, squirrel, I call him Matt, <laughs> um, just as far as just his knowledge of what he does, his job, um, it's really a, a really good opportunity, and if he does good enough, he'll be running the shop because this person uh, wants to retire in a couple years. So, um, it's a really good opportunity. Um, and it's just all around, it's, it's really good. Before I moved here to Indiana, I was dead set I was moving to Texas. That was my plan. That was my goal. I was moving to Abilene, Texas or in that vicinity. 
Abilene, Texas is three hours northwest of Waco because it's the temperature is a little easier for me to handle. Um, I think I'm going to be okay down there aside from the humidity sometimes, but I think I can manage it. The cold isn't going to be too bad, so that's going to be really helpful for me. Um, and I'll get probably get better insurance and stuff like that. Um, and it's nothing for me to drive, you know, eight hours and go spend a weekend at Mary's, <laughs> which is going to be doable, which I could do a couple times a year because we're actually going to have, if we do it, I'm going to be coming up to see my mom every couple of months. That's the only way I'm going to do it is if I'm able to come and see my mom every two to three months, except for winter time, because I don't want to take a chance in the winter, but we'll be driving that time. So he doesn't really have to put it, ask for time off. If we need a week off to do an emergency run somewhere to go to see family, it's already, it's a done deal. We don't have to ask. So whereas now if we want to take time off for a certain thing, he has to put it in three months in advance. <coughs> yeah, no snow. <laughs> well, they had snow this year. But um, it's just, it's a really good opportunity. <coughs> but if we... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, when we do it, if we do it, not when, but when if we do it... um. Mary's is like the halfway point, so we would we would go up and spend, you know, a night or two at Mary's and then head up on up to see my mom. So. Oh, I know, right? I, yeah, right? <laughs> but um, I'm just putting it out there. We haven't decided nothing. We're still working on uh, details. Um, but if it does happen... I am having one hell of a de-stash sale because I'll be damned if I'm lugging all this crap shit clear across the country. <laughs> Cause I hell no. If it's stuff that I can't get, like certain there are certain things I'm not gonna be able to get again because they don't make it no more or don't have it no more, I'm keeping it. But other things, yeah, I'm I'm having a de-stash sale. A big one. So depending on when it is, if if we do it. If we're not able to do it by the end of this fall, end of summer, end of fall, <coughs> then it'll be spring next year for sure. Oh, yes, Mary. Yes. Um, we would definitely get you and Tom down for a visit or just, you know, definitely. Oh. Oh, I already checked them out, Kiki. I'm golden. It's good. <laughs> she used to work at Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> they got a Michaels and all that there. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was just a seasonal worker because they moved down in September a couple years ago and, um, cause they couldn't handle the cold. Well, she opened up an auto repair shop and he, uh, her husband basically is her employer. Um, he works there full time. He does it all himself. Um, but why, why they were getting their shop set up, she went to work and she, cause she couldn't just stay home. She was bored. She didn't, you know, and if you put a guy in a shop when they're building something, you don't want to be in their way. So, but she's been a mechanic for 25 years. Um, so she, um, she was working part-time at Joanne's and then they wanted her to do other things other than what her description was, you know. Well, then, um, they didn't want to pay her her hours. So, just, you know. Oh, how did that happen? That got cut. Um, she was like, screw this. So, now she works for herself. <laughs> um, yeah, they've got everything there. 
but yeah, so it's just it's up in the air. We're not a hundred percent. We're gonna go down in July, check it out, and see how it is. And then um, you know, it'll be there. But um, yeah, definitely we have a lot of things to go over, you know, and just prepare and it's it's a big move. I mean, moving to Missouri was going to be a big move too, but, um, and I, I would still love to be in Missouri. Um, but it's kind of foolish if we didn't, if he didn't take this opportunity, it'd be kind of dumb. Um, so I'm still out of the cold. I won't be as cold, but, um, I remember we used to live in Texas when we were younger. So, but yeah. But my stomach's about to eat itself. I'm starving. I'm going to roll these up, pay, uh, beads up, and get them ready to send to Miss Mary Marlowe. And I'm going to go wash Jada's plate uh, thing in my body. I can't believe I used, I, I thought, I shouldn't have double guessed myself because I was like, no, this is the new one. Well, no, it wasn't, but. <laughs> oh, we definitely will be, Janie. Yeah. Oh, I already told her that when I come down in July, I have to go to San Antonio. So, <laughs> she said, that's fine. You and I can take a day and go to San Antonio while Squirrel works with Tony. So, yeah, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah. Thank you guys for hanging out. And I have missed being online. I'm still, uh, I'm I'm under the weather quite a bit now. And it doesn't help. I'm still kind of sentimental, sentimental and depressed about emotional about Pixie still. So I just have my moments. So um, it's summertime, springtime, and I don't want to be cooped up in my in my craft room during the day because it gets too hot. And so um, I try to be do other things more so in the summertime. So. I, I'll be doing more videos than anything because I like to go do things in the summer. Uh, go fishing, you know, and things like that. So, um, we may not do as many lives like normal. I, if I do them, it'll be like on a Monday when he's at work. I might just, you know, pop on whenever randomly as best, you know, whenever I can. Um, but we're going to try and get back on schedule with the Sunday lives. It's just, you know. Summer's here, and his only day off is uh, Sundays and Tuesdays right now. So, you know, if it's going to be a, nice on a Sunday, we might want to go fishing for the day or something. So, hi, little C. I hope you feel better. Yes, I love you, Mary. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a big, um, I'm, I bought itches. It's a big decision, you know, and it's, it's been, it's nothing for me just to pack up and go because, um, I say that I have a wild heart and a gypsy soul. Um, I haven't found my roots yet, I guess you could say. And I just, I love just to be able to pack up and go. That's just, it's, it's, I've been that way for the last 25 years and <clears throat> so for me, before I got into crafting, I could pack everything I owned into the back of a car. Everything. My computer, all my clothes, everything else back in the back seat of a car. Now, not so much. So I was looking around my room the other day like four years ago, I could pack everything I owned into a car. Now, not so much. So it's like holy moly. <laughs> Yeah, change is really hard, but I'm I'm used to like packing up and going somewhere and starting, you know, starting fresh or, you know, doing different things like that. So there's always a struggle, pros and cons, you know, and but for me, it's just I've I've done it. I it 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 doesn't bother me. I don't get scared to do it. Like I'm right now I could probably you know, I could pack up right now and just go. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go down there, visit check things out, um, and then, you know, make sure we have a place lined up to live, all that kind of stuff, you know, and I'll have to sell my trailer before, you know, when we move or 
things like that. So there's a lot of things that's got to happen first. But so it's just going to be a uh, something that's not going to be rushed into. But we're going to take our time and decide if that's what we want. But you know, it's a good opportunity. So you know, it's like when when businesses want to you know move you across the country for a job, you know, some people have to do it or they lose their job. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to do that. Whereas this, you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, it's not a, a mandatory thing. So, um, I'm excited. I think it's going to be nice. <clears throat> Oh, I bet Iceland was beautiful. That That's cool. Yeah, like, I don't know. I just, I haven't found my roots yet. And I've lived one place where it felt like home. And it that's it. Like, and I wasn't even there that long. But it felt like home there. And it was in uh, New Mexico. And I loved it down there. But, um, I just, I don't know. I can go visit Mary Marlowe in Arizona, too. <coughs> but, yeah, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of pros and cons on things. Oh, that would, I bet that was amazing. I want to go to, um, Ireland. I would love to go to Ireland. I think that's one place I would really love to go, Ireland. I've been through Canada once, but just driving. I didn't go there for nothing else, just to drive straight through. <coughs> I drove through Canada to go to Buffalo, New York once. Yeah, I would love to go to Ireland. I think it would be beautiful. Oh, we just made some paper beads. I was showing just different ways on how to make some paper beads and how I do them, uh, Carrie. And then just um, talking about uh, opportunity that kind of fell into our laps. And... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I think it would, oh, uh, yeah. Um, there's a movie I watched. I wanted to go to Ireland before, like Ireland, Scotland, and a few other places. But um, years ago, the movie P.S. I Love You came out. And they go over there. And I just, I was like, that's why I want to go to Ireland. Like the landscape. Oh, it's so gorgeous there. It's beautiful there. So I would love, that's on my bucket list. Is I would love to go to Ireland, <coughs> but um, I'd like to go to Paris too, or you know Europe. But I don't know, I like not specifically Paris, but I would like to go over that way, and I would love to visit Australia too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I just hope, like, by the time I get the, you know, I'm able to go to places like that, or if I can, I hope all the, you know, all that drama, everything is better. Like, it's all, you know, it's safer to travel then. But, anyways, I am going to hop off here for the night, you guys. Thank you for hanging with me, and I hope you enjoyed my videos on how to make some little mini beads. Like, these are, actually, this is actually really cute. That one turned out really cute. It's a little, so like a, looks like a saucer. Um, and hopefully you learned or give it a try. Uh, Susan, or Susan, Country Girl Scrap, Scrap and Lynn. <laughs> she'd never done these before and seen it. So she said she's going to give it a try. And this one, if you missed it, I made this with washi tape. Here's the washi tape. So. Um, yeah, you can use washi tape. I like, there's so many things that you can use to be able to make these. So, 
If you guys try it, post your pictures in the group so I can see. I would love to see it. And um, enjoy. Have a wonderful evening. And I believe, I think Lisa comes on tonight. I don't remember, but keep an eye out for her if she does. <coughs> and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye. Loves and hugs.